Hi everybody, it's Zandile on the Miss Masumbuga channel and this is the second video in our Apartheid was better series for all of those who believe that Apartheid was somehow better for black people in South Africa. This is the video on Pearl Janssen, a beauty queen who was very much failed by the Apartheid system but has been failed as well within the new dispensation. I hope that you enjoy and I hope that you can like, share and subscribe. Thank you. And Miss World 1970. The first of the magnificent seven is contestant number one, Miss Africa South. <laughs> Who is Pearl Gladys Jensen. Pearl, would you like to stand on where that cross used to be? What is your ambition then? My ambition is to become a successful model. <laughs> Second on runner-up, Miss Africa South. <laughs> So, Paul, what I wanted to know from you is why are you so distant about you being the first person that paved the way for black girls in South Africa? Because first of all, there was no advantages for me. Um, it, it ruined my life. It ruined my life. So, the name Pearl Janssen probably means very little to most South Africans, even though she was part of a monumental shift and event in world history. In one year, she was unknowingly at the heart of significant strides in feminism, while at the forefront of showcasing the brutality of apartheid South Africa. At the same time, she was part of conversations surrounding representation, beauty standards, and the exploitation of women. She's even portrayed by Laurice Harrison in the 2020 movie, Misbehavior. Janssen doesn't seem to have been an anti-apartheid activist or member of any of the various movements, nor is there any indication that she was in any space that really pushed for social change in real significant ways. In fact, she was a colored factory worker who, like many people throughout history, simply wanted to live her life and be allowed to do so. And that's exactly the point. Because this was South Africa in 1970, and the European standard of beauty was so weaponized that rather than choose one representative, Apartheid South Africa would send two representatives to the Miss World competition, with Gillian Jessup being Miss South Africa and 20-year-old Pearl Janssen representing the African demographic as Miss Africa South, because Apartheid was led by unoriginal idiots. Anyway, the pageant held in London was the kind of mess that impacts history. It was the age where women's measurements were still plastered on the screen, and the hosting comedian, Bob Hope, was comfortable reducing all the contestants to tits and ass and referencing his own extramarital affairs. I am very, very happy to be here at this cattle market tonight. <laughs> Moo. Now it's quite a cattle market. I've been back there checking calves. However, there were also British women of the women's liberation movement who had had enough of the objectification of women and sought to make their views known through a public protest at the Miss World event. Their intent had been to place the issues faced by women under patriarchy at the forefront by broadcasting them to the 100 million viewers of the pageant worldwide. Protester Jenny Fortune says, Miss World epitomized everything I believed was wrong. I felt as if we were stopping patriarchy in its tracks. So, the protesters would be a part of the crowd, and once the Miss World contestants were all on stage at once, one woman would give the signal, and they would all rain flower bombs and rotten vegetables that had been hidden in their bags onto the stage. The aim was never to critique the contestants for participating. It was to criticize the organizers and the organization. So they reasoned that having all the contestants on stage at once would make the largest impact. However, Bob Hope's jokes proved so triggering that the plan changed on the spot. He was so gross, remembers protester Sarah Wilson. Hope referred to the event as a cattle market, mooing to make his point. Wilson said to the woman beside her, this can't go on, and swung her football rattle as the signal. Hearing the rattle, the other protesters began to throw flower bombs and vegetables at the stage. It felt as if we were taking control. It was life-changing. I knew that I was heading into a very different future, says another protester. The women were eventually ushered out and detained by police on various counts. 
But the leaders admit that the changes were fleeting and minimal in the long run. We didn't realize what we are up against, says another protester. The pageant continued nonetheless, and in a positive move for representation, Miss Grenada Jennifer Houston became the first Black Miss World, eliciting complaints of the pageant being fixed since Miss Sweden had been a massive favorite to win, with the twist being that the first runner-up was Miss Africa South, Pearl Janssen. The pageant organizers were even accused of being racist to white people, and Janssen was accused by some of being an apartheid agent, while at the same time being warned to stay away from any British politicians. The white Miss South Africa ended up as a fourth runner-up. <laughs> Pearl arrived back in South Africa and was paraded as a symbol of hope for the oppressed, with people of color and African people showering her with love and praise and treating her to celebrity status. From the airport, there was a Cadillac waiting for me. People were standing on streets and balconies. It was just excitement. They took me to the Cape Town City Hall. When I got back to our township, I thought my mother's roof was going to smash in. The people were sitting on our rooftop. What I had given was hope, recalled Pearl. But she was still a colored woman in apartheid South Africa. And she had captured the attention of the world by doing better than her white counterpart. So Pearl was instead punished. Janssen said in 2018 on the UK show Lorraine, but we are concerned. It was of no help. No? Did your not, life not change when you Not at all. Home? Not all. Not at all. Mm -hmm. Wow. Because I would have thought... Because I come from the apartheid era, you must understand, there was absolutely no, no opportunities for us. Yeah, yeah. So when I came back to South Africa, it just, it just died. It was just dormant. That's astonishing, isn't it? Because yeah. you would have expected... She went back to her life because she had no choice but to, and was treated to victimisation by her white superiors, with her father even being impacted, when his supervisor said he didn't need the job because Pearl was now rich and would take care of him. Also in 2018, the Miss South Africa organization celebrated 60 years of the pageant and they didn't invite back any of the winners of Miss South Africa nor the Black Miss South Africa pageant as it became known. Which leaves Pearl Janssen and those linked to the same pageant out in the cold as unrecognized footnotes in a crime against humanity because Miss South Africa has chosen to exclude them, just as it always did. With that exclusion, Miss South Africa humanized apartheid by making it a story that went from bad to good and had affected no one seriously. In the process, it eliminated the young women and girls whose progress the apartheid regime had directly stopped. Janssen did get a bit of the recognition she deserved in the 2020 movie Misbehaviour and she did recognize her dream of becoming a singer at the age of 58. She is a cancer survivor and is a pensioner living off her Sasa grant. However, the aim isn't to paint Janssen as a simple sad case because one of the reasons she's so compelling is because she doesn't seem to see herself as one. But she's also not ashamed of her victim status because that shame is not her cross to bear. She is a victim of the brutality of apartheid and she doesn't pretend that that didn't matter. Her story also shows us that apartheid and post-democratic South Africa can be bad. She shows us the duality of the existence of non-white South Africans, particularly Africans and coloreds. The apartheid system took away her opportunities and punished her for being deemed more beautiful than a white woman. And when the democratic system was implemented, Pearl Janssen had her credit pushed under the carpet again due to a systemic desire to make apartheid something that just happened and then ended. And as stated before, it's important to remember that Pearl Janssen wasn't trying to change anything. She was just a beautiful young girl who dared to be brown in a white world.